For every story you tell, you're selling. So it's story selling. And you're selling yourself. You're selling your products. You're selling them on why they need to follow you. You're selling them on why they need to engage with your content. At every point, there's always some selling going on. Otherwise, it's just a waste of effort. So it's becoming tradition on this show to go back in people's tweets and kind of bring up something that they've said in the past. And I found a tweet from you from 2020 around the time that you started on Twitter. And the tweet says, funny thing about money. If you think you have it, you do. If you think you don't have it, you don't. Can you unpack that a little bit for us? <laughs> I, um, I'm just, one of my philosophies about business, about money, about life in general is whatever you believe is true for you, you know? So like, if you believe you are, then you are. And if you believe you aren't, then you aren't, you know. I, I, I am somebody who used to be the world's biggest introvert. And, and so for the longest time, all I could experience in my life was stuff that introverts could experience. And so anything that was outside of that circle, I felt it wasn't for me. And so because of my belief, right, it limited what was possible for me. And so the moment I opened my eyes to expanding my belief systems about what was possible for me, the 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 the, the results kind of spiraled, <laughs> you know, it, it it went out of hand. And just a few months down the line after I changed that belief system, I started seeing some really insane results in my business. My personal brand took off and followers started coming in, income, everything, like the entire thing turned around just because... I started to see myself as somebody who could experience what was beyond the life of an introvert. Yeah, for sure. Because I've heard you also talk about your general life philosophy is that everything is fluid, right? And I think that kind of ties in with what you're talking about here is, you know, your job is fluid. Uh, you know, your, your money is fluid, the things around you, even your, your personality. personality is boom. Fluid, you know? um, so how has that philosophy served you in business and in life that merged with the fact that i infused a growth mindset into how i handle every single thing in my life it has made things so easy because i i approach problems differently from how most people would you know i see a problem and i'm and by the way it's not a problem for me it's a circumstance i see a circumstance i'm like what's the solution here you know instead of complaining about the problem or instead of well reacting or you know feeling some type of way about the situation i'm always focused on like what exactly can be done here you know like what exactly is the solution here and i get straight and focus on what i can control you know because i believe that everything is fluid and everything can be controlled except where your soul is headed you know i believe that the only things that are permanent in life the only thing that is permanent in life is your soul and as long as you focus on what you can control, you can live life by design and not by chance. Mm, that's deep. And like you can, it, it's like living with intention, right? And kind of deciding what you want to make real. And I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with, especially in this content game and with in, intention is fear, right? And it's like, they, they're thinking a lot about what other people are going to think about them, or they're going to think I'm not smart enough, or I'm not good enough. And I want to read another quote that I heard you say that I think really elaborates on this point, which is it really it, like I felt this was when you approach life from a mentality of abundance, there are no losses. If things go well, it's a success. If they don't, it's experience. So I think when it comes to fear, it's like, why don't you just put yourself out there, start creating, start learning, start sharing, start doing and then you can iterate, you can make things happen. And if you don't have the success you're looking for right away, especially with content, you can share the things that you've learned from exactly. things not going the way that you wanted. Or if things go amazing, you can share that. And so it's even more content, it kind of snowballs. So this yeah. is kind of one of the secrets of content creation, right? Absolutely. And I think some of the most powerful content comes from that side of of the not the not so successful things that happen along the journey you know some of the best most inspiring content comes from the journey itself what most people would call the failures 
that becomes the content. The failures are the content. Because by the time you are able to like tell the stories, what are the problems you experienced along the journey? What are the problems that you might have faced and everything, like the struggles and the entire thing that you might have experienced before you got to heaven island in quotes <laughs> you know that becomes the sweetest part of the content that becomes the most inspiring part of the content and so that's why i say that even for someone who has lost their years for someone who has crossed their 30s it's still not too late for such a person i mean in such a person's case you might not already have the income you want but trust me you have the experience that someone else who has the income is looking for because if you share your story, for example, you share your story about how you didn't make any money in your 20s, somebody who is in their 20s will learn from that story, right? It becomes an asset for someone who is in that journey and who is in that space. And that's why I don't see bad decisions as bad decisions. They're just choices. And every choice leads to an experience. You know, whether it's a good experience or it's a bad experience, it's still an asset. <laughs> every experience is an asset. 100%. And like... I've noticed that a lot of the personal stories that I'm telling, there's kind of like this positive feedback loop too with myself where like I share something and I get it off my chest and I'm vulnerable. And then people respond well to that, which we all know they will, but we're kind of still nervous about it. But then when they do, it like encourages me to want to share more of that stuff. And so I'm actually right now, I'm working on a lot of like more personal tweets and uh, definitely like putting ourselves out there in the spaces. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but I want to talk about like, you know, when deciding what type of content to put out, personality and personal stories and stuff is part of it, but there's other parts of it too, right? And you have this framework, the RVL framework. Can you kind of break that down for people and, and like the cadence at, at which you push that content out? The RVL content structure is is something that I believe works the most for people who are in the personal branding space and um, make money online, right? So make money online. It works a lot for people in the make money online space. RVL basically means results, value. It means lifestyle. Like you share results that you're getting all with stories. You share valuable information also with stories. And of course, you share your lifestyle. Your lifestyle in this case doesn't mean you're driving a Lambo. That's not what I'm saying. Your lifestyle is the human element of your brand. People want to know that they're dealing with a human being, not a robot, not chat GPT. I mean, we're now in 2023, middle of the year, where anybody can go to chat GPT and craft some really nice content and come drop it up on Twitter and say, I'm a content creator, right? <laughs> but the most authentic content will be the content that comes from your stories, not from the internet. Everybody wants to talk about the lessons they've learned along the way. But if you can tell the story before the lesson, then it's way more powerful than just talking about the lessons, you know. And so even if you decide you want to start using the RVL content structure, which means results, value, and lifestyle, then everything you share in that line should definitely be coming from a point of your story, you know. That's what makes it authentic. And that's what makes it tailored. It's what makes it build your personal brand. And so people see all those stories and they can immediately remember you once they see the story, right? Because it's linked, you know. So yeah, that's what I would say about the RVL. And for those who would maybe want to try out using the RVL structure for content, there's a structure with which I put with which I put out my own RVL um, posts. So I have like the R. So it's VVR VVL for me. It's VVR VVL. So I put out more value than I put out any other thing, because again, you want to be giving more than you receive, right? So you want to be giving out more than you're trying to receive from people. So I put out more valuable content and all that valuable content comes from the point of stories. It comes from my journey. It comes from like some of the biggest lessons I've learned along the way, what is currently working for me. You know, that's also value, right? So I share more value. And then I also talk about results because again, aside from sharing valuable content, you also want to share stuff that's going to make people look at you and say, I want to work with this person or I want to learn from this person. And you can only get to that point where people are saying they want to do those things with you if you're sharing results. <laughs> so you share your own results 
or you share the results of other people and then people feel like, yes, I definitely want to learn from this person or I want to work with this person. And that's how I get many of my clients, you know, many of the clients I get from social media, it's because of what I give and share in my stories and in my journey. So I talk a lot about what is working for me. And I think like by talking about what is working for me, it works for me even more. Like <laughs> I get so many clients, so many calls coming in, you know, because of those things I'm currently sharing with people. My growth on social media has also been because of the RVL um, content structure, you know, sharing more value than anything else, you know, sharing my story, sharing my journey, sharing what's working for me. I could just discover something two hours ago and I get on a space and I'm sharing it with everybody, you know, because it's working for me. I mean, you keep mentioning storytelling and I think it's so important and it doesn't matter. I think whether you're trying to build a personal brand, whether you're trying to monetize, whatever you're doing, you've said storytelling is selling, right? So I'm selling you to follow me. I'm selling you to believe in me. I'm selling. That's you to why I call me. it story yeah. selling, by the way. That's why I call mm -hmm. it story selling because you're selling something at every point in time. Like for every story you tell, you're selling. So it's story selling and you're selling yourself. You're selling your products. You're selling them on why they need to follow you. You're sharing that. You're selling them on why they need to engage with your content, you know? At every point, there's always some selling going on. Otherwise, it's just a waste of efforts, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they all lead to some sort of exclamation point of like, this is what I would like you to do, some call to action. Uh, the stories is what draws people in. It makes them connect with you. It makes them believe in you. And then you can ask them to do something and, and you feel comfortable asking because of all the value you've given. It's a fair exchange, right? And so there's no better place to tell stories than in spaces, in Clubhouse, doing these kind of audio uh, experiences with people. And that's where you and I have met and we've shared the stage a bunch of times now in a short period of time. And yeah. I'm so impressed with the way that you host these stages, that you speak on the stages. Uh, and, and so I'm hoping you can give people some insight into maybe how to become a better host, a better speaker, or if it's through storytelling and monetization, like what are some of the ways that you're using spaces to your benefit? Okay, so I started using Spaces to get visibility and increase income in 2021, December. And that was on Clubhouse. I didn't have Clubhouse on my phone at the time. But someone I used to admire a lot invited me to come teach his community on Clubhouse. And so I installed the app on my phone and then I get on this, on this app and I'm like, where have I been all this time? Like, how did I not know about this app, bro? And I really enjoyed the first experience I had on Clubhouse. And so I started getting active on Clubhouse and I was hanging out in rooms with some of the biggest creators on the platform, you know, um, the Million Marathon. I don't know if you know the Million Marathon on Clubhouse, but they have one of the biggest shows on Clubhouse. And I was really enjoying the conversations they had, but not just as a consumer. I mean, whenever I consume content, I always consume with the mind of a producer. And I see, like, I see things that other people wouldn't see otherwise, because when you're, when you're consuming content with the mind of a producer, you're, you're not just enjoying the value you're getting, you're getting for the time. You're also really trying to, like, criticize and scrutinize and you're really taking note of what is working for them and so you can replicate for yourself and there was something i saw in the million marathon that really intrigued me and that was the fact that they they were able to start a room on clubhouse and in just minutes they would get a thousand listeners in and so i really wanted to find out like what exactly was so special about what they were doing that made it so powerful and you had so many people trooping in and you had so many people engaging in the comment section I discovered that by creating an experience for people who are listening to you, they enjoy not just the conversations that go on in the room or on the space, but they want to also engage and they also want to share because people love experiences, right? Anybody can just open up a room on Clubhouse or a Twitter space and they can just go on and on about any topic in particular. Yeah, it might be nice for people who are looking for useful information, but it's better for someone who gets an experience out of it. When you create an experience for people, you don't need to do advertising. They will become the advertisers. And so they want to share that experience with their friends. They want to, you know, come back again, right? So they come back again and it just keeps going on and on. And then I should also say something about 
you know, like people being strategic about using audio spaces, audio rooms and audio spaces. I feel like most people just, uh, yeah, they, they go, they go big on the conversation itself, but they don't go big on the engagement side of things. Because if you ignore engagements when it comes to hosting like audio sessions, then you'll be leaving a lot of money on the table. You'll be leaving a lot of people on the table, actually, you know, for people who have attended before. One very interesting thing we do is we reset the space after a few minutes. After every few minutes, we reset the space or we reset the room. And so what resetting the room means is maybe we have four speakers on stage, right? And so each speaker speaks for like 10 minutes each or five minutes each. And after every speaker has gone and shared their thoughts, you reset the room. You make those people who joined within the five minutes while that person was speaking, there were some people who joined the space. There were some people who joined the room. Welcome them, right? If you just join the conversation, you're welcome. This is, so you introduce them and it becomes an inclusive environment, right? Remember, we're talking about experiences here. And so that becomes an inclusive environment for them. They feel like they are part of something, right? And that also brings me to the engagement part of things that has to do with sharing, And I think this is something that most people ignore. And the ones who don't ignore it, they do it the wrong way. So they feel like by just telling people, kindly share the space, please. (laughs) They feel like by just telling someone to kindly share the space, please, everyone is going to go and share and your space is going to go viral. But nobody shares if you are nice. Just ask them nicely. (laughs) Nobody shares, right? But what I found is, And by the way, every single space that we run has a minimum of 200 shares. Every single space that we run has a minimum of 200 shares. And what I found to work when it comes to making people share your spaces or audio rooms is, first of all, give value in advance, right? It's like I tell you here, use this phone for five minutes and tell me if you like it, you can have it. (laughs) So... (laughs) By giving them something in advance, you have made them feel more invested towards the experience, right? And so you now tie the call to action to that little bit of experience that they have gotten so far. You're like, hey, if you're enjoying this conversation so far, you can share the space so that your friends can come and enjoy this too, you know? So it becomes very fun. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. (laughs) I do, man. I get exactly what you're saying. It's something that I'm working on a lot. So I have this new space that I'm running with Nagato that you came on stage uh, recently, Wi-Fi Money. And it's giving me like, like, I guess I'm a little more like, I don't want to say formal, but I'm, uh, you know, in the podcast, I'm a little more like, uh, you know, research-based. I have my questions that I want to ask you and I respect your time. With the spaces, it's a little bit more free-flowing and we just kind of go. And so I'm making a real effort to kind of like share my personality and make jokes and like, and just like you say, create experience. I actually think this is kind of my life philosophy is that, uh, you know, when people say like, what is the meaning of life or, you know, uh, it's hard, it's a really hard question to answer. But what I've found is that people want, to have experiences like the all we end up having at the end of the day is our experience so you can find meaning in xyz but it, the only reason it gives you meaning is because it then enhances your experience everything you do that you love the people you share with the people that you hang out with the money that you spend to do things like it's all experience at the end of the day and so if you can create that for other people what do they say it's not Uh, what you say to people. They don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. Right. And so one of the things that, that you've done as well, kind of like piggybacking on this live experience is something that we've talked about around urgency and doing like Mm -hmm. these pop-up streams uh, that I think you stream to like Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and all these places. And you teach people actionable items for like 30 minutes and but but you make it like hey i'm doing this now come learn this quick and you can use that actually to uh get people to buy on impulse so talk about like exactly the the storyline of urgency as it ties to monetization so i i am one of these people who likes to experiment i experiment a lot you know i believe that industry leaders are is they're just a product of series of tests that went right you know and and I tested a lot of things. And one of the things I tested out that really was so powerful for me towards monetizing my my low ticket membership, which is currently $27 a month, is I I went live 
it was a pop-up live. So I went live on Clubhouse. The first time we did it was on Clubhouse. I tested it out on. And you know how Clubhouse algorithm is, right? So it shows people the rooms based on their interests. And so I targeted three specific interests for that room. And I made sure that the headline or the title of the room was a hook to get as many people into the room. And so by getting strangers into the room, because I was saying or teaching valuable stuff in the room, they stayed. And after they stayed for just a few minutes, I was like, I have to run right now. But before I go, I just want to give you guys the opportunity to join this thing. And then I tell them about the thing. I tell them how many people have joined the thing. I say, hey, by the way, if you're just coming in, you're welcome. You can also join and stay with us until the end of the session. And if you do, here's what you're also going to get. And I, I give them so much value and then talk about my offer, and then get as many people from that session to sign up for my membership. And by doing that every day, the people who come into those pop-up sessions are completely strangers. Brand new traffic every day. Like, <laughs> brand new traffic every day. And it becomes like a loop. You know, when you've done something over and over again, it becomes part of you, you know. And it gets to a point where you can even automate the process of delivering that value, by the way. It gets to a point you can automate the process of delivering the value. There's tools you can use to record those live sessions up to the point of even giving the offer itself. And then when you go live the following day, you just play the recording and it gets the strangers in and it closes the strangers for you. And everything is all fully automated, you know, and you can do this on Facebook. You can do this on Instagram. You can do it on LinkedIn. You can do it on YouTube. You can stream those things. I mean, you can stream the recordings using restream.io. That's what I use. So I use restream.io. It's a very powerful streaming tool. And then I can stream to multiple platforms. I can stream a recording of something I have already done. And so the, the strangers who are coming in, they don't know that I've already done it. So they're going to stay all the way till the end. And then eventually they sign up for my $27 a month membership. Yeah, man. So you're using all these different platforms in such great ways. And I know I ask you about this every time we talk now, but the podcast audience hasn't heard about it yet. So talk about what you're doing on WhatsApp. And because, you know, us Americans, we don't really uh, use WhatsApp that way. You say that WhatsApp in Africa and in other countries is being used similar to email here in the way that it's high conversion and you own the data uh, to some degree. So um, can you talk a little bit about how high leverage and how high conversion that is? And, and also if you recommend that people start building there? Of course. Um, WhatsApp for people in India, for example, WhatsApp in India, WhatsApp in West Africa, in East Africa is like email right and just like we have email marketers in the u.s we have whatsapp marketers in africa we have whatsapp marketers in india and what there's hardly any difference between whatsapp marketers and email marketers right the same way the email marketer gets people to opt into the email list you have people opting into your whatsapp contact list and when they opt into the WhatsApp contact list, there's an autoresponder on the back end inside the WhatsApp DM that picks up the messages as they drop. And so when they drop, it gets them to save your contact. And so when they save your contact, the person automatically begins to see your post via WhatsApp status. And so the more people you can reach, and it's an inbound stream, that's why I love it so much, you know. The more people who can see your post on WhatsApp status, the more, um, the more you know, leverage that you have, the more leverage you have. For example, I currently have at least 7,000 people who see my post every single day on WhatsApp status. And anyone who has tried out WhatsApp status and email, which I have, by the way, would know that 7,000 views on your WhatsApp status is like 70,000 emails. Yeah, it's like 70,000 emails. And with 7,000 views on your WhatsApp status, if you run an offer that maybe is as little as a hundred dollars, right? A <laughs> hundred dollar offer. And you have a lot of traction with the, with the people who follow you on WhatsApp. For example, my followers on WhatsApp, I run an offer that is a hundred dollars. Every time I run such an offer, it makes me anywhere from five to $10,000. Every time I do that, every single time, you know? And so I decided to grow that list and I'm growing. In, that's my target for this year, for example, is 
20, it's 10,000, 10,000 on both ends. So that's 10,000 on one hand and then 10,000 on another WhatsApp number because I have two devices that has separate WhatsApps, right? <laughs> and so I'm growing both of these to 10K, 10K each. And so if I have 20,000 people, that's like 200,000 email subscribers, bro. And by the time we start running the kind of offers I run for my current WhatsApp list, it's going to be insane because I currently have people who pay anywhere from 90 to $150 per day to make a post on my WhatsApp status. So I make a post for you and I share it with my people. If it's a traffic generation campaign, if it's a lead gen campaign, you get as much as a thousand leads in a day. <laughs> it's insane, dude. You're, insane, you're bro. absolutely killing it. I, and you're doing it on so many different places. But I know that like when you first start out, there's a lot of people that are just beginning of course. and they're trying to figure out like, where do I build? What do I build? Do I need to be on all these places at once? It's like, it's a lot to think about. And you said you can't build a business by building multiple businesses, right? It's like, so whether you're deciding if it's WhatsApp or something else, like there's a real value and importance in being laser focused in the beginning, right? And kind of building yourself up in one expertise and one platform. One thing at a time. Being laser focused in one direction will make all the difference in six months. because. Uh, that's exactly what I did. You know, I got laser focused after struggling for 11 months in several different directions. I decided to get laser focused in one direction. And in three months, I got what I couldn't get in 11 months, right? And by the time I doubled down on what was working during those three months, I was able to triple those results. And I was in, I was, I had made my first couple thousands of dollars by six months down the line. And so it became easier for me over time. It became easier for me to keep replicating those results. And so what used to take me a month to achieve started taking me a week to achieve. And what, what took me a week to achieve now takes me a day to achieve, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's really powerful, especially when you're building a, a one-month business, like as a solopreneur, you have to leverage the power of laser focus in the beginning. And so if it's, it's one business, it's one platform, right so one business one platform one outcome you know that's it and then eventually when you have gotten to that point where you're seeing results you know what's working you've doubled down on what's working you have scaled to a point the plan becomes how do i automate the process of generating that result because if you can automate the process of getting the result then you can remove your hands and go and build something else right so that's how you become the serial solopreneur in that sense. Or that's how you become the person who, you know, builds other things on the side. But in my own journey, instead of me to jump out of the business and build something else or pivot to something different, I decided to expand within my lane. And, and so I built out my affiliate business to a point where I could now expand into coaching and speaking and consulting, you know, so I really didn't pivot. I expanded in my lane. <laughs> Let's say you decide to to pick a lane and you start building and you get a little bit of an audience going and you're like, you know, maybe I want to start monetizing this and I want to bring on some clients to maybe help them with some of these skills. Um, I, I go back to kind of your story. And in 2018, you were uh, temporarily relieved of duty, right? Yeah. And, uh, still to this day, mm -hmm. it's, it's temporary. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, what you said really struck me in something I was listening to. You said, you know, because that was a really tough time uh, when when you don't really have a lot of options. So you yeah. think, but you have a decision, right? And and you said to yourself, I will never look in someone else's account for what I can find within me. And I was like, damn, that is heavy <laughs> because, you know, for you, you are a Otondu, right? Um, Otondo, that's yeah, what we call it in Nigeria. Yeah, Otondo. Otondo means yeah. someone who has like <laughs> no track record and you're a newbie in a space. Yeah. Like nobody wants to work with yep. an Otondo. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get your first three clients? What was that tactic, that special tactic that you used? So I think that was when I really went in with giving people value in advance. So I found 10 brands on Instagram that were very visible but at the same time needed what I had to offer. And so I took the risk off the table and I offered them a sponsorship. And I said, hey, I want to sponsor your brand. By the way, you're doing amazingly well. So there's always the ego tease that comes first. So you want to make them feel good about themselves. And then I'm like, 
I want to sponsor your brand with a video that's going to get you even more visibility. And you don't have to pay anything for it. I just want you to see the video. And if you like it, you can just say something nice about it. That's it. You have absolutely no need to pay anything for the video. It's a sponsorship, like I said. So I'm sponsoring your brand with it. All I will need is one, two, three details. And then we get it done. In 24, 48 hours, you have the video. They're like, really? I said, yeah, sure. And then they send me all the details. and. I went crazy with it. And the way I did the work, it was like they had paid me for it. I gave all I had to create those videos. And by the time I sent the first video to the first guy, you should have seen the reaction on his face, bro. Like this guy went crazy. Like, how am I just meeting you for the first time? Oh my God, you are so good. How much you charge for your videos? By the way, I didn't have a price then. So I'm like, "Mm." (laughs) so I had never been paid by anyone, you know? So it came as a shock to me when he said, how much do you charge for your videos? I had to say, I'll get back to you on that. (laughs) So I did the first couple of videos. And then when we finished with that, it was crazy because by the time I'd done five videos, I had my first three clients. The guy who, the guy who I did the first video for, he was so pumped that he asked me, he said, I have to start making videos for them. And it doesn't matter the cost, he will pay. He just he was just so crazy about what I did for him. And, and that was when I learned the power of providing value in advance. And I feel and, and I learned more about this when I started understanding how value-based positioning is done, you know, by by providing some kind of value in advance, you automatically position yourself as the ultimate solution to people's problems. Some people don't even know that they need a solution until you solve the problem for them, you know, in some cases. And so, yeah, that was how I got those first three clients. And then I started building out my freelancing business and eventually branched out into affiliate marketing. (laughs) I love it, dude. I think there's a real power in doing free work up front, especially when you don't have a portfolio. And so it's not only just to necessarily attract and convert that particular client, but it's, you know, maybe they don't hire you, but now you can get a testimonial, you can, you can add something to your people, portfolio. People start talking about there you. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, you get that proof. And so one more time, I'm going to quote you because I think this is a perfect emphasis on that. You say, if you don't attack your problems, it will keep attacking you, right? And so I think that that you're a perfect example of that. So Kenny, I just want to say, man, you have really inspired me. I've only known you for what, two or three weeks now. We, we've spent a few hours together, you know, talking and sharing value with each other and with people uh, in different audiences, whether it's on stages or on this podcast now, but you're just really someone that I look up to. I admire your success. I think I have a lot to learn from you. And I really want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing everything that you know and your perspective with my audience. So if you could share with them where they can find you online, anything that you're excited about that you'd like to point them to. Okay. Um, so first things first, I am Kenny. Kenny Uwokoye is spelled K-E-N-N-Y-N-W-O-K-O-Y-E. Kenny Uwokoye. That's the name on every social media. Okay, not every, but I'm most active on Twitter. And then you can also follow on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, TikTok. (laughs) Yeah, so those are the platforms I'm most active on. And what's so interesting about what I do on social is I create different, different kinds of content for all my social media platforms. So if you're following on Clubhouse, you enjoy my rooms. And if you're following on Twitter, you enjoy my spaces. I don't do many threads. If you check my tweets, I probably have like less than 4,000 tweets. And that has gotten me almost 70,000 followers on the platform. And that's mostly because my spaces are always crazy. So I do with spaces what other people do with threads, but 10 times better, (laughs) you know? Everybody, make make sure you're going to Kenny's uh, his spaces because they're really something special, and I think that that particular platform is going to be just so massive coming up in the months and years ahead. And and Kenny's doing it better than almost anybody. So thanks again, buddy. I uh, appreciate your time so much, and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. The bigger it gets, the bigger the guests, which means more valuable conversations for you. Also, make sure to check out the Pointing Up email list in the description to get early access to new episodes, plus exclusive answers to questions I ask the guests that don't make it into the show. See you soon.